Hello everyone, uh, a warm welcome to this webinar and we thank you all for attending, uh, taking time out of your busy schedule and attending this webinar. So basically in today's webinar uh, our focus will be on the test platform for testing the high speed OC3, OC12, STM414 links and uh, we will be covering the channelized as well as the unchannelized testing aspects of it. So this webinar will be presented by two of our senior colleagues, Mr. Jagdish Vadalia and Mr. Anand Prasad. Uh, just to a uh, quick introduction about uh, GL, uh, and uh, I think most of you are quite aware of uh, what exactly we do, So, but still I just wanted to touch base and uh, give a brief introduction about uh, GL. So we are a 30 year old company and uh, we are, uh, our products are mainly uh, catering the equipment vendors and uh, telecom service providers. Also we work with many system integrators to meet uh, various test requirements arising at various stages of uh, telecommunication product development life cycle. So, uh, we have our expertise uh, in uh, protocol emulation as well as analysis across various networks. Uh, our tools range from uh, simple PC based software test tools to uh, complex hardware units with uh, futuristic expansion capacities. Our test solutions cover a wide area of networks like wireless, 2G, 3G, 4G, and then uh, we have many solutions uh, for IP, voice over IP, Ethernet and the traditional uh, TDM networks, T1E1 covering T1E1, T3E3 and lastly the high speed networks uh, that uh, OC3 STM1 and OC12 STM4. We are also working on uh, uh, the higher capacity uh, handling products uh, which will be released soon. Apart from this we also do some consulting uh, 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 services for telecommunication companies all over the world. Uh, we offer consulting services for wireless, SONET SDH, T1E1 and T3E3 testing and analysis. And we do uh, provide consultancy for system design of wireless, satellite, fiber optic and microwave networks. So we have our branch offices in uh, Bangalore, India and uh, Shanghai, China. We have many representatives spread across the world to cater to the local uh, requirements. So this is a brief about uh, what exactly we do. And, uh, I think uh, the rest of the presentation will be handled by my colleagues Jagdish and uh, Anand Prasad. What you do this? Okay, thank you, thank you, Sanjeev, uh, for giving a nice introduction of our company. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends on your locations. Uh, we today are going to be talking about a product, Lightspeed. Uh, uh, just to give you a little bit background, at least uh, about GLs, as Sanjeev talked about, uh, just to touch base with that. Over the years, GL has introduced uh, and developed uh, very many products, uh, even from two-wire, four-wire, slower speed, uh, also the product in Datacom from RS-232 and onwards kind of thing, and going at higher speed like T1, E1 interfaces, and T3, E3. So in this TDM domain, uh, going faster rate at OC3 or STEM1 and STEM4, OC12, uh, we have introduced products uh, which is a light speed product here. Uh, as you can see from the screen here or the slide, the product has a high bandwidth interface to the PC using PCIe Express interface which is a by four lane 
which gives you a plenty of bandwidth to capture as well as analyze and emulate traffic coming over OC3, OC12 pipes. Uh, unit also offers USB interface. So sometimes, in some instances, we provision this product into enclosure for portability reason, and which can be accessed uh, uh, over the USB. It's a USB 2.0 here. Uh, the product has four SFP ports, so it can be used with the traditional SFPs at OC3, OC12 rates. The SFPs can be single mode or multi mode. Uh, also, it can be LC connector or SC connector, so it gives you a full flexibility. So hopefully, over the time uh, during this webinar, we would be able to introduce various capability of the products there. Particularly, the product is designed to analyze the traffic uh, and emulate the traffic. Uh, so when it comes to SDH or Sonnet interface, uh, there are two kinds of the traffic. Uh, is whether it's a channelized traffic or either it can be unchannelized traffic. So here, the two ports are dedicated for analyzing, emulating channelized traffic, and two ports are dedicated for unchannelized traffic and uh, can be used to emulate as well as analyze those traffic there. So hopefully, uh, uh, we would give you enough details about the product over the presentation here and see how can that be product can be used to channelize traffic and unchannelized traffic analysis and emulation there. The product can be installed in a server, 1U or 2U, depends on the kind of the traffic analysis or number of T1 E1s and uh, OC, uh, DS0s that we're going to be analyzing or capturing and so forth. Uh, with multiprocessor or a single processor system there. Okay, so moving next slide here. Uh, so today's agenda, as I was talking about this just a minute ago, that is, is pretty much uh, divided into two areas. One is the channelized and other is unchannelized. Uh, my colleague Anand is going to be talking and discussing more about the channelized, how this channelized traffic is constituted and how this light speed board can be leveraged to use its capability to monitor as well as emulate various traffic there. And we will have a brief break after that and then I'm going to take over again to discuss about the channelized aspect of the product and how it can be leveraged to monitor packet over sonnet and ATM that's traditionally carried over on channelized. So I will pass now to my colleague Anand who is going to take over and show you uh, the various capabilities. Uh, I'm Anand here. Uh, I'll be uh, taking over the uh, uh, STM1 channelized part of uh, LS1000, uh, STM1 and STM4 both. Uh, I'll be starting with uh, what is this channelized STM1 and STM4 or OC3, OC12. And uh, uh, from there we'll move on to the uh, LS1000 capabilities on uh, emulation and analysis and uh, capture capabilities. So as you can see in the slide here, uh, it tells about how the T1 events, how the multiple T1 events are uh, multiplexed uh, to form uh, STM1 and how these STM1s are further multiplexed to form uh, STM4 there. So here you can see that uh, this one T1 or the one even uh, comes here and then such three events or four T1 events are uh, grouped to make one group. It's called as a tributary unit group two. And uh, further such seven uh, tributary unit groups are uh, multiplexed to make one uh, uh, tributary unit group 3 or it can even be uh, multiplexed to make one VC3. Uh, 
that is called as virtual container 3. So these are the two paths in which uh, the T1 events uh, can be multiplexed into one STM1. So from here, it goes as the one administrative unit group 3. Uh, three such uh, AU3s uh, can be multiplexed to form one uh, AUZ1. It's called as the administrative unit group 1. Or from this path, when we come from a TUG3 path, uh, three such TUG3s can be multiplexed to make one virtual container 4. And uh, this will be added with some uh, uh, path overhead. Uh, additional uh, heading details will be there. And that will form one uh, AU4 there. Uh, so when I come from this uh, TUG3 path, we'll make an AU4, and that ultimately comes out as STM1. Or when I come from AU3 path, such uh, three AU3s will make one AUZ1, and ultimately comes as STM1. So at this level, if AUZ1 uh, goes in this path, like if I multiply four such AUZ1s, it makes an STM4. So these are two paths like from uh, TUG2 to TUG3 or from TUG2 to VC3. So in uh, these two ways, um, uh, multiple T1s can be uh, multiplexed. And this image here shows uh, how many such T1s are uh, present inside one STM1 and, uh, uh, and the total how many will be there inside STM4. Uh, so here at the outer level, this OC12 or STM4 with this uh, 622.0 Mbps will contain four STM1s, uh, where, each is, uh, where each STM1 is of uh, 155.2 Mbps. And this will contain uh, three STS1s. This STS1 is nothing but this uh, AU3 or the TUG3. So each uh, such uh, AU3 or the STS1 will contain uh, seven TUG2s internally, these things. And uh, each TUG2 will have either three uh, events or four events. So when I go to <coughs> this uh, TUG2s, I will get uh, 28 events there or 21 events. And when I go to one complete STM1, it is 84 events or 63 events. And when I look at the STM4 level, overall it is uh, 336 events and 252 events. So this is the internal uh, hierarchical organization of uh, T1 events uh, within STM and STM4. And uh, whatever uh, the blocks which have been marked as green uh, are the paths that are available in our LS1000. Currently we support these paths. I'll move on to the next slide. So this slide explains about uh, the T1 event monitoring. Uh, within the STM1 bar 4 and what are the multiple solutions available there. So here we can see uh, the one here which is the traditional solution uh, that has got uh, multiple hardwares there like uh, one STM1 MUX bar DMUX device and multiple cables to uh, link these uh, uh, multiple T1 events uh, to the multiple T1 event hardware there. And in this way it's going to be a very bulky solution which needs a lot of hardware configurations. And when there is a lot of configuration, it's very easy to uh, miss a few things and then uh, run into some issues. So the new solution offered by LS1000 uh, is very simple, as you can see here. Uh, this is one URAC system containing one LS1000. And uh, that's what the hardware just we need. Uh, it can take uh, up to two channelized uh, ports are here, so we can feed uh, two STM1 lines or STM4 lines, and uh, which can uh, make us access all the uh, 84 events or 63 events uh, in one line, and uh, it uh, doesn't stop there. So we can go up to the DS0 level uh, inside each uh, event, inside each event there. Uh, and uh, this solution on the LS1000 uh, comes with the uh, Windows and Linux API toolkits. So uh, any end user who wants to develop their own custom applications on these uh, T1 events multiplexed within STM1 or STM4, they can develop their own uh, on Windows and Linux platforms. So the my importance here is that LS1000 is going to be more advantageous compared to the previous traditional solutions in many ways, like with respect to the rack space required or with respect to the hardware, with respect to the cost, so in multiple ways. Uh, LS1000 is providing a very simple and easy solution uh, for uh, uh, T1 event monitoring and analysis and even emulation within STM1 or STM4 lines. So moving on to the next slide, uh, this explains the uh, T1 event emulation 
I mean, uh, uh, multiple protocol emulation uh, over T1E1 with an STM1. So as you can see here, on the right hand side we have shown uh, multiple protocols like ISD and SS7, uh, IMA, MLPVP, CAS, SS7. So all these protocols can be uh, emulated on the LS1000 hardware using the uh, STM1 channelized analyzer software and uh, how and uh, how many protocols and how to do that all will be explained in the further slides down there we'll go in detail about that uh, here we are emphasizing that uh, the LS1000 comes with a lot of uh, uh, protocol emulation capabilities uh, this is uh, one of another important features of LS1000 uh, that is uh, Sonnet and SDH frame capture and playback uh, here, uh, whatever uh, the LS1000 uh, port number 3 and port number 4, which are channelized ports, uh, they can be used to capture anything and everything that comes over the STM1 and STM4 lines. So whatever traffic comes, that could be uh, channelized traffic or unchannelized traffic or any proprietary traffic. It doesn't make much difference there. So just uh, that STM1 port 4 line, so at the bit level, uh, all the traffic that is coming is captured and that is uh, stored onto the hard disk. Uh, anything and everything, I mean that it even includes the overhead and the payload portion both. Uh, the overall uh, size to which it can be captured is limited by the disk size there. Uh, all these pre-recorded files uh, can be played back uh, using the playback application on uh, this hardware. Uh, when we uh, play back the traffic, we are going to recreate that original traffic and uh, this playback traffic can be used for further offline analysis on the traffic. And uh, shown here on the right side, these are the applications, receive packets to file, and this is the one which can be used to do the raw capture. So as you can see here, the both ports uh, are used uh, to capture. And here on the uh, transmit cells or packets from file application, it can uh, uh, play back the previously recorded uh, files there. Uh, the next slide here, we are explaining about um, the working principle of uh, channelized LS1000 solution. It's giving in detail a uh, picture about uh, how the entire solution works there. So on the left hand side, we have our uh, LS1000 hardware, which will be housed in one URAC access system or two URAC access system, depending upon what kind of applications we are running on. And the software side, so we have uh, two uh, modules here, one is called as this uh, TXRX and the Max Dmux module and one more is this uh, soft even analyzer or uh, the API toolkit for custom development applications. So what I mean by uh, this uh, T1 even analyzer is uh, this is uh, uh, readily available software from ZL Communications uh, that is going to access this uh, T1 events uh, multiplexed within the STM1 bar STM4 lines and provide a lot of applications which have been developed over the years and uh, if uh, this is not the requirement and uh, we want to develop our own uh, custom applications on the Steven events that is also possible so with the, for that uh, uh, we, we provide the API toolkit along with the board uh, which is available in Windows and Linux platform and custom applications can be easily developed with that so as you can see here this uh, Max DMAX and the TXRX application uh, and this uh, API toolkit based applications are exchanging the T1 even channel traffic over a UDP link here. So uh, these applications, uh, API toolkit or the soft uh, this T1 even analyzer is going to produce uh, T1 even traffic here and this application is going to receive that and multiplex those T1 events into STM1 or STM4 and uh, do the uh, transmission over this LS1000 board. And in the reverse way, uh, it can receive the STM1 or STM4 uh, frames, uh, demultiplex them uh, to access the individual T1 events there and uh, transfer uh, those T1 events to the next stage. So it could be the uh, T1 analyzer or it could be the custom application developed uh, by the users. Uh, with this API toolkit, uh, they can access the T1 even or they can even go up to the DS0 processing here and uh, they can do emulation and analysis uh, at the DS0 level. So a few of, a few of the applications listed here like ISDN, SS7, SDLC, BIRD, so this uh, 
can be analyzed and can be emulated, which are readily available under T1 Analyzer. So this explains about uh, the internal architecture of LS1000 such analyzed resolution, how it's going to work. We'll move on to the next slide. So uh, here it introduces the actual uh, OC3 bar 12 or STM1 bar 4 channelized analyzer. Uh, so the first part we have uh, this LS1000 uh, located in uh, uh, this one your rack system and which is capable of uh, doing this STM1 bar 4 TXRX there. Uh, uh, this one, this uh, board uh, is actually uh, controlled by the software called as OC3 by STM1 channelized analyzer. This uh, channelized analyzer produce, uh, has got few basic configurations for the user to make, like uh, what kind of uh, RX signal we want, what kind of loop back there, what is the clock we want to use. Uh, for each port, uh, we can make such configurations. And these panels, monitoring panels here, provide uh, some basic information about what is the status of the link, are there any alarms, or is there any uh, error counts like uh, uh, OOF count there, or are there any underruns. Uh, uh, such data set is going to provide and when the actual um, TXRX starts uh, these two details like OKTX OK frames and OKRX OK frames are going to give the frame count how many frames have been successfully transmitted and how many frames have been successfully received on both the ports there individually. As part of the configuration so we have uh, uh, one more uh, thing here. Uh, here uh, we need to uh, configure a few details about how many uh, OC3 or how many OC12 ports we want to uh, analyze there. So for example I can show you here this is the one this OC3 ports. Uh, since I have opened here for this OC3 here you see OC3 ports. If it is uh, currently used for OC12 then you will see here it has OC12 ports. Uh, we have configured both the ports so both the ports are now actively being processed so one and two here. Uh, suppose if it happens to be STM4 then uh, we can configure uh, whether we want all the STM1 streams within STM4 or any few desired STM1 streams we want to process. So here uh, since it is uh, OC3 there is only one STM1 stream we have configured that. Uh, further we can uh, configure how many T21 channels uh, within STM1 uh, we are interested in. Here we have given 1 to 4 so that means that just uh, 4 T21 channels uh, we want to process here. Uh, uh, another setting is this uh, VC mapping. As we discussed earlier, so there are multiple paths in which the T1 1 can be multiplexed into an STM1. So for even it could be through VC3 mapping or for it could be VC4 mapping. If it is T1 then it could be VC3 mapping or it could be VC4 mapping. So user has the uh, option to choose what kind of mapping you want to use here. And uh, one more uh, option for the user to configure is the numbering scheme. Now we will uh, discuss further what it is uh, but uh, here we can understand that uh, this is uh, referring uh, how the T1 and E1 are numbered uh, within uh, the STM1. So as we saw on the uh, previous slide there are overall 63 events and 84 T1. So how these 63 events are numbered or how the 84 T1s are numbered uh, is uh, the mechanism in which these three standards will differ. So we'll see more detail on that and uh, GL LS1000 uh, supports all these standards. So with this all configurations done, uh, the T1 events will be multiplexed and sent over the STM1 or they will be demultiplexed from uh, the received STM1 or STM4 line and passed on to the further stage. So this uh, further stage is nothing but uh, the STM1 T1 event analyzer. So this is the main GUI uh, that is going to handle these T1 events. As you can see here, so since we have given here 1 to 2 OC3 ports up to 126 uh, events are enabled within this analyzer. So that means so through this software we can access all the 126 events there uh, and do uh, some kind of applications on that. Uh, this, through this uh, software we can set what kind of framing we want here. For example here we have set this as CCS and CRC and other uh, framing modes for even all are supported by this application. Uh, further details provided here are what are the T1 in alarms for each of these 126 events here. 126. So you can see here that there is no such alarm everything is quite working fine. 
and uh, if there is any such uh, thing like if there is any carrier loss or any kind of alarm so that would appear here so which will be some kind of uh, uh, diagnostic tool uh, to make the corrections at the link level so one more thing is there's a t1 even statistics here so which gives uh, some statistical counters like what is the frequent uh, like what is this uh, uh, crc error if there is any frame errors uh, if there is any underrun or the overrun at the time of uh, running any application so this is going to give some kind of statistics at the low level uh, through this uh, software uh, comes a lot of applications we have uh, tried to list few of them few basic applications here example the signaling beds our uh, power uh, dc offset frequency so, and as we can see here so we have this uh, drop down menu uh, and gives uh, so option to select which particular even we want to uh, work with for example we want to see the power uh, of this uh, uh, 101 so this represents the uh, 101th even uh, within this uh, uh, within this OC3 port 1 and 2 here we can see that frequency is observed on the 120th even so like that uh, probably have listed a few more items like few more basic applications uh, this is the oscilloscope display Again, here we can select uh, which even uh, we want to see this oscilloscope. One more such application, and uh, another one is the spectral display. Here it is, card number two, or it would be anything. It provides that uh, basic information about uh, what is the observed uh, power here. These are uh, basic applications, and along with this, uh, it gives uh, uh, other applications for the analysis of the protocols and emulation, which we will be uh, seeing in the further slides. Uh, I have moved on to the next slide. Uh, here, it uh, is uh, uh, trying to explain about the numbering schemes that are available. So probably in the previous slide, uh, we were uh, uh, discussing about uh, three uh, st standards for numbering the T1E ones there. So as you can see here, these are the standards Lucent, Motorola, and Huawei. And this is the image uh, that we were referring initially, uh, which is telling about the multiple paths in which the T1 events can be multiplexed. So the important field here is this one. This, what is this? TUG3, this one, uh, TUG2, and this T11 and T12. So we can see that this TUG3 uh, this TUG3 are uh, such uh, three items are there and tug 2s are 7 and t 11s are 4 and t 12s are 3 so these three uh, combinations will identify one particular t1 or one particular even within stm1 uh, in this image here we can see that this tug 3 tug 2 and tug 12 or here uh, t 11 have been put together uh, for different standards which numbers uh, like uh, which combination of this one represents uh, one particular even here we can see that for example sixth one let's take the six sorry the 61 here it says that for the Lucent standard uh, the 61 is numbered as um, first tug 3 second tug 2 and the third uh, t12 so coming in this path this is the tug 3 this should be the first tug 3 and this should be the second tug 2 out of 7 and uh, <coughs> this should be the uh, um, third T12 uh, that represents the first when uh, that represents the sixth even but if I go to Motorola it says it is 161 in that path in this path it says it is 161 and if I go to Huawei it says 321 so uh, this combination is going to uniquely represent one multiplexing path for particular even uh, but ultimately there are just 63 events uh, whether uh, which you take uh, whether it is Lucent, Motorola, Huawei, they are all represented 63 events or 84 events. It only differs in which path is numbered which even. That is the only difference there. Uh, this uh, slide is uh, representing uh, GL's uh, platform of uh, T1E1 boards, uh, which have been developed over the years, and a lot of people are already using it, and a few people might be aware of these boards now. So on the left hand side, we have a list of uh, T1E1 platform. So here, this is the 16 port. A T scan analyzer so it is only the receive only mode board so only the RX applications are enabled on this next one is T probe T1 analyzer that comes with uh, two T1 ports and the next one is the uh, quad or octal T1 that comes with four or eight respectively this T1 ports so these for these boards this is the main analyzer 
So if I look into what we represented in the previous slide for the STM1 analyzer, which is similar to this one, uh, but the only difference is that here we have got two uh, ports there, but there were 126. So the important thing is that who have been familiar with uh, this uh, GLCT1 analyzer, they will get the same. Uh, it's, uh, they will be, uh, they, they, it will be very easy for them to use the LS1000 solution because it is just continuation of that. It uh, is going to increment only the number of T1 events. And uh, all the applications that have been developed over this T1 analyzer are also available on the LS1000 platform. A uh, few of the applications uh, we have listed here, like this TX Stone, uh, multiple configurations available uh, for this TX Stone application, like which time slot we want to use and which card we want to use. Uh, which uh, frequency. So this is one kind of application which is available on this uh, GLS T1 analyzer on these platform of boards and the same thing uh, is available on S1000 also on 126 events there. Uh, another such application is this precision daily measurement. Uh, again as I said before this is available across whether it is T1 even or LS1000 you will get the same application there. Uh, this is a transmit dialing digits. Uh, this is one more such application which is uh, available for both. And uh, one more it is the T1 event record playback application used to record multiple uh, uh, events and uh, playback it at the uh, offline for the further analysis, uh, which is available again across LS1000. I will move on to the next slide here. Uh, this uh, re this is going to show one of the important applications that is multi-channel BERT. Uh, so this multi-channel BERT application uh, can be used to test this uh, device under test across uh, against multiple BERT patterns. Uh, so as we can see here, this LS1000 application uh, showing this uh, uh, bit array test uh, which is being conducted on uh, the 63 events there. So within one STM1, uh, 63 events are being tested. Uh, for the BERT uh, using multiple uh, BERT patterns there. So this is the uh, list of uh, uh, BERT patterns that are supported uh, by this application, multi-channel BERT application. Uh, here uh, these are the capabilities of the application. So this can do TXRX, that means that it can generate the BERT pattern and at the same time it can receive and verify and give statistics and what is the bit error rate observed there, uh, what is the uh, sync uh, seconds and such details it's going to provide on RX side. Uh, important thing is uh, we can conduct this test on multiple T1 events. So as explained, 63 events are being simultaneously tested for BERT. Uh, again, uh, here we have shown the full T1, but we can go up to the fractional T1 events there. So this time slot representing 1 to 31 is a full uh, event there, but we can go up to uh, fractional also. And further, uh, we can even go up to the fractional uh, DS zeros there. So here the sub-channel is uh, not there, so it means that the full time slot is being used but uh, it has the capability to go up to the DS0 level also at the fractional level so we can select that also. And one more important thing is this uh, board pattern can be user defined. So users can select whatever board pattern they want and that can be tested against that pattern. I'll uh, move on to the next slide. So uh, this is uh, another important application available on this uh, STM1 T1 analyzer uh, that enables uh, call recording over multiple T1 events for different protocols. And it can be done uh, uh, with few applications. Uh, the one uh, application we have is a call capture and analysis application. So here recording uh, twice uh, can be triggered uh, based on uh, <coughs> some different conditions for different protocols. Uh, the protocols, I mean ISD and ISAP, uh, CAS, uh, in that case it will be MFCR2. Uh, or we can detect the various traffic types like voice, fax, tones, digits by specifying the threshold power level there. That is the CC application. And the one more application uh, is called as this uh, PDA, that is uh, packet data analysis. So it is part of uh, the protocol analyzer. So multiple protocols can be analyzed, like we have uh, a list of analyzers for various protocols like ISD and SS7, uh, ISAP, such things. So those uh, protocol analyzers come with this uh, PDA. Um, so it can uh, analyze the signaling messages and uses the traffic configuration map provided by the user and records the traffic uh, 
into GL's uh, proprietary GLW file format there. So it needs uh, some user configuration uh, for uh, mapping uh, uh, the signaling to the traffic channels there. So that configuration is made. So with that, the PDA can uh, analyze uh, the signaling and then uh, record the traffic into the GLW format. Importantly, like we can uh, do this recording over multiple T1 events. Uh, uh, which are available within this uh, STM1 or STM4. Uh, we'll move on to the protocol analysis part. Uh, we have a big list of uh, protocols that can be analyzed uh, over uh, GLC T1E1 uh, analyzer. Uh, so here we have uh, represented a few of them, uh, CAS, ISD, and SS7. Uh, this is the main uh, protocol analyzer GUI that will be uh, same across all the protocols. So as you can see here, so it has got the summary view here, which uh, represents some important fields uh, particular to that uh, protocol. Example, this OPC, DPC with respect to this S7 are being shown. And this is the detail view. So for the selected frame here, we get the detail view. And uh, when we capture uh, the traffic in both the directions of a line, we get messages and even we can build the call trace. So here we can see that uh, multiple calls have been detected and uh, the application has uh, generated the call detail records uh, for the protocol. <coughs> so this is the SS7. So similarly, uh, we have the same features. It means it looks the same, but it works for, uh, uh, say, ISDN protocol. We can see these messages are related to ISDN and the detail view here. And for this also, we have built the call trace uh, record here. This. These are the samples that we are showing, but we have another uh, big list of protocols which can be analyzed or STM1. And uh, this one shows uh, the protocol capture configuration. And here we can see that uh, this one is showing up to 126 uh, even channels here. So that means that uh, over the two channelized ports, uh, we are monitoring the bidirectional traffic and up to 126 events can be analyzed simultaneously. And here this window provides uh, which time slots uh, within this uh, even uh, we are interested to analyze. So here we can see that we have selected 16 the time slot on all the even. And uh, these uh, uh, like these events for this time slots they'll be monitored for the traffic there. And further uh, we have uh, configurations for the data rate, whether each channel is of 64 bit capa like uh, 64 kbps uh, data rate or 56, and uh, like what is the FCS configuration. So uh, we have such further details which can be configurable by the user. So this is uh, one more important uh, application from ZL that's called as ZL's uh, uh, Net Surveyor Web uh, that comes with the light speed analyzers. So this is a centralized uh, server architecture where uh, multiple protocol analyzers can uh, uh, put uh, the data into the database. And uh, this database can be accessed uh, by different client applications over the web and get more details on that. So, uh, so here we can see that uh, this is the centralized database here and there is a web server. And uh, this can uh, listen over multiple interfaces like wireless, IP, uh, TDM per optical, and with respect to our current product LS1000, so this optical is the one where we will be uh, monitoring for this data. Uh, so uh, these are called as probes, so probes can be running in multiple uh, uh, like uh, geographical areas, and these probes are nothing but the analyzers, protocol analyzers that we just, in the previous slide we saw. So, so those analyzers are going to collect the CDRs, and they are going to push them into the server uh, in a, uh, in a uh, centralized server. And those records can be accessed over the web by multiple uh, client applications there. So here we can see that uh, depending on the date, uh, it has listed out uh, multiple calls here. And uh, these fields like call find all can actually show you uh, what is the uh, call observed or what, what, is the, what is the actual message flow for that call. So the details can be observed. And uh, multiple graphs uh, can be generated uh, for the uh, different uh, KPIs here, which is called as basic KPI here. 
success versus failure calls. So uh, in one shot, it's going to give you what's happening there. Um, so in that way, it's going to be very useful for the service providers or uh, network operators uh, in order to have uh, uh, some kind of surveillance and uh, uh, some kind of remote access and see what's happening there. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, this explains uh, about the emulation uh, features available within the uh, T1E1 uh, uh, part. So here uh, we have uh, uh, one platform called as Maps Platform. Uh, that is a software architecture of, uh, which can be used to uh, emulate uh, multiple protocols. Uh, here in this slide we have shown uh, uh, one uh, network image uh, of the SS7 and using LS1000 along with this uh, maps platform we can emulate uh, uh, different nodes of this SS7. Uh, so here we show that this STM1 line, so this LS1000 is generating this STM1 containing the uh, SS7 uh, traffic there. And uh, at the same time, the emulation, so sorry, the analysis capability uh, can uh, make the user analyze these uh, uh, STM1 lines for this SS7 network. On the left-hand side, uh, uh, we have listed out the uh, different emulations that can be done using uh, Maps uh, platform, and a uh, few of them are here: SS7, IST, and CAS, uh, GSM, A and ABC interfaces, uh, Map, CAP, INAP. Uh, IUP and MLPPP. So these are a few of uh, the uh, emulation capabilities available uh, within LS1000 uh, within STM1 and STM4. Uh, this gives, uh, in, the, in the previous slide we saw that uh, using maps we can do uh, multiple protocol emulation. In continuation with that, this slide is giving one glimpse of what that uh, uh, maps and how it's going to look like. So these are uh, a few slides of these maps. Here we can see that uh, we are placing thousands of uh, calls to generate the bulk calls over multiple uh, events there. And uh, along with signaling, it's capable of generating uh, traffic uh, for these calls. Uh, we can see here, this is the uh, call generation uh, module. It is producing bulk calls. At the same time, this one, this is a uh, call reception module, so which is capable of receiving multiple calls and then give details on that what it is. And here it provides uh, what is the call flow uh, for each call. The statistical uh, dialog here shows uh, how many calls are being placed here, total calls, how many are there, and how many active calls are there, uh, how many uh, calls have been successfully completed, and is there any failed call, and what is the call uh, per second, calls per second. A few important parameters about this configuration is going to provide here. And further details like what is the call graph, what is the caller distribution, uh, success ratio. So this is going to provide here some kind of diagnostic tool to get uh, uh, the knowledge about what's happening, like what's going on there. And analyze depending on how many failed calls are there, is there a problem with the link. So that kind of analysis can be made using this uh, MAPS tool basically for the uh, bulk call generation over multiple T1 events uh, by placing thousands of calls. Uh, I'll move on to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, uh, file recording and playback over uh, uh, multiple full bar fractional T1 event. So previously we saw this uh, file recording playback uh, over the complete uh, STM1. So that was not uh, uh, working with the T1E1s, -E but here it is the same thing, but uh, at the T1E1 level. So once uh, we receive the STM1, so that is uh, go to multiplex or demultiplex those events and then uh, feed it to the T1E1 analyzer. And on the T1E1 analyzer, we have this application for recording uh, multiple T1E1s -E to the disk, and those uh, whatever pre-recorded files can be played back. So one such application here is uh, record from multiple cards. Uh, here we can see that uh, we can select on which all ports uh, we can do this recording. So here we have selected all the 63, that is one STM1 line. And uh, for this uh, even, uh, how many time slots we want to uh, capture the traffic. So here 1 to 31 all have been selected. And once we start the capturing, it starts dumping that, starts recording the data to the file that has been given here. We can uh, give the capture size 
uh, for this file so when this uh, limit is reached it's going to automatically stop or uh, even we can manually stop the recording whenever we want so it is one such basic application for uh, recording the T1 events with an STM1 and STM4 uh, another such application is uh, this one uh, automated continuous capture so it has got a few more features compared to the previous application uh, here we have got uh, a few more options like uh, uh, how to do the capturing like uh, whether we want to record uh, this data into multiple files and uh, what should be the file size each file size and how many files uh, such we want to have and how to name these files uh, for example I want to prefix the date and time of the capture along with uh, each file there or we can add a sequence number so here you can see the sequential file names or date bar uh, time uh, formatted names which provides those options and these are the file size limits or the time limit and how many number of files we want to have so it has got those features in addition to what the previous application was doing uh, and it is going to again record into multiple files there the next application is a uh, uh, playback application it's called as uh, automated record playback uh, whatever files were recorded in the uh, with the help of record applications can be played back here uh, to recreate that original traffic and uh, that traffic can be further analyzed in the offline uh, so here this application shows that multiple files are being played back here you can see it is starting from 0 up to 62 uh, so we are playing back files and all the events within an STM1 there and it gives further details there what the status and how many bytes so all that is there so the main focus here is that this application allows to play back uh, on all the events or all the T events available within STM1 and STM4 uh, uh, I think with uh, this is the uh, main configuration here so on which uh, port we want to do the playback and what time starts when so you can give uh, up to the uh, which time slot we want to capture that kind of configuration we have here and other details uh, with respect to the application uh, I think uh, with this uh, we are at the end of the channelized session and we can go with uh, any questions what is the format of recording that we do in the list of them uh, the recording will be uh, appropriated to GL and whatever uh, recorded files are there that has to be played back using uh, GLC playback utility okay so yeah let me extend that uh, Anand uh, yeah. so so yeah we have a two types of recording or uh, that Anand explained one was the recording at the frame level uh, that we are capturing the frame at uh, stem 1 stem 4 uh, which is agnostic to the protocols, whether it's channelized or unchannelized. So that's captured frame by frame, and we put the header on top of that. Okay, and that's what we call the GL proprietor in that nature kind of thing there. But that's again made available to anybody there that interested. The other one that what the last one that uh, uh, Anand was explaining for the channelized capture. There is no file format. It is a, essentially a flat file in a binary format. So the data is captured as is, and uh, it, it happens to on the T1 or E1 there. Okay. So it is a flat binary format. When it's capturing, it's capturing on individual uh, files. So there is no demarcation required there. So if you're capturing entire E1, uh, time slot 1 to 31 so everything would, would be captured byte by byte into the time uh, into the file there okay, okay. and uh, is there any option to export this in uh, PCAP format uh, yes uh, so in our protocol analyzer we do have a we capture our stuff into uh, DL proprietary format again uh, there we do provide a utility to convert uh, the capture into PCAP format. And if, if requires any of those needs to be uh, exported into PCAP, yes, uh, we will work with you if there is no available there uh, and make that available in PCAP also. So most of our products are working very close with the PCAP file formats there. 
and uh, uh, yeah couple of more questions like uh, can we trigger the recording uh, based on events so uh, uh, anand was explaining there are uh, since we have various ways to capture right so we can capture let's say at frame level let's say let's we explain or at t1 even level or at the call level right so the call is essentially an event there. So we have a call capture applications and it can be triggered based on, the call can be captured based on the call, when the call starts and it will stop when the call ends there. Or it has another capability uh, within T1E1, we are uh, triggered based on the power levels or frequency or let's say fax call. So yes, there are various ways of the trigger there available. So it depends on when we say record uh, and then trigger, uh, we, we have to understand your, how you want to use the products. So. Okay, uh, thank you Jagdish. I think we can move ahead uh, to the next slide now. Okay, so uh, yeah, th thank you Anand. It was very interesting, very detailed. Uh, 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 discussion about the channelized aspect of the light speed there. I will touch based on uh, unchannelized traffic that carried over STEM 1, STEM 4, it was 3 or C12 there. Uh, based on, I think that we are somewhat running on the time here, so I will speed up the discussion here. Uh, but I think the essence here uh, is the product is to analyze the traffic, uh, unchannelized traffic, which is can be carried over uh, STEM 1 or STEM 4. Uh, so when I was talking about this channelized breaking up STS1s and breaking VTs and breaking again in T1 events, here uh, all these STS1s are concatenated and creates and a, a bigger pipe for like a word there. So we would be analyzing the bigger pipes at STEM 1 level or STEM 4 levels and that's usually uh, 622 megabits per second or 155 megabits per second there. And so traditionally the traffic that carried over unchannelized is a called the packet or sonnet or PPP. Uh, traffic over the sonnet there. So you can see here that represents that how, what's the format of this packets are. Those are the HDLC packets and that can carry pretty much any kind of the traffic within that that you want to carry. So traditionally it's the IP based traffic would be carried on those PPP frames there. Other kind of traffic is the ATM that's carried over uh, again on STEM 1 and STEM 4 there. So we will be looking into those two types of the traffic that's supported by this LS2000, uh, LS1000 product here. Okay, so moving to the next slides here. So again, the, this product can be used in a PCI form factor or can be used in a, a more portable version uh, of the product there, which has a USB interface to it can be connected to the laptop or PC via USB there and uh, some of those applications are made available over the portable versions but again those are applications can be also available on a card form factor it can be mounted in a server uh, similar to the channelized there and there are two ports that are dedicated for the unchannelized that would be used for this purpose here and I'll talk a little bit more about also there is a, a third formation there that we allow one of these channels to be configured for Ethernet interface this channelized in, in this uh, mode there. So two ports are dedicated for unchannelized. The two are not used when it's used in a unchannelized monitoring aspect here but uh, one of the applications that we have, we configure this as the Ethernet interface. Okay, so we'll touch base with that. Uh, again, I think it's uh, the same 
information that what we discussed, but I think it talks more about more protocol standards, that what is the PPP standard is and how it is defined, how it is, uh, uh, what, what the RFC is uh, and what, which RTU specs is used to define those uh, protocols and so forth. So uh, again, it's the reputation there. I'll pass that. Uh, so this goes more again in detail about the POS, the packet or sonnet. Uh, traditionally, the, when internet and interconnected networks were used, the IP, the internet protocols were carried over PPP. And when its speeds get faster, faster, yes, you would be carrying over STM1, STM4, and STM16, and so forth kind of thing there, right? So, uh, all the IP datagrams it's represented here, it's uh, carried over PPP traffic and that PPP traffic is now carried on or carried over uh, the SDH or SONET frames there. And this gives a capability to carry uh, various kinds of traffic as we know that IP traffic can be uh, significant and it can carry various kind of traffic, voice or IP, videos, chat or emails and so forth. So not going into details about it, but this product does allow you to look inside and uh, emulate uh, this PPP protocols and go up to the internet traffic or IP traffic and analyze those traffic also there. So moving to the next slide here, so this is a main application. Uh, a GUI looks like it's uh, similar to our traditional GUIs there. Uh, gives you a physical error, alarms and errors, uh, any uh, errors at the different levels into the sonnet frames and so forth kind of thing there. So uh, you can use uh, in a terminate mode or monitor mode depends on how, whether you're using this for as an analyzer or as an emulator there. Uh, various scrambling, various clock options, uh, and so forth kind of thing. So this illustrates that uh, the depth of the product's analysis and uh, interpretation of the incoming traffic and so forth and gives you different counters and so forth there. Okay. Uh, this is uh, one of the applications uh, used to test uh, uh, the physical layers using the BERT application there. So not only the physical layers, but uh, it does use you higher layers like PPP, whether you want to have create IP and within IP you can define your TCP port or UDP port and carry out this better uh, uh, test application end-to-end -end testing there. Uh, you can transmit one end and verify the other end or you can loop it back from far end you can verify and uh, test end-to-end -end traffic kind of thing there and you can see some of those counters here is IP, UDP, ICMP. So various kind of the uh, packets are analyzed and then tabulated in various form factor here there. So it's very versatile uh, and uh, gives you the details about the different analysis there. Okay, moving to the next one uh, is using the product in analysis mode. Uh, we use this thing in a monitor environment so that in, in a PPP um, network, uh, where the traffic is carried over STEM1 or STEM4, the product can be used to tap onto those STEM1, STEM4 fibers and can be brought into, in, into the, uh, the light speed product and where it can be further analyzed using uh, the PPP analyzer. This was so it's here. Uh, so yes, on the, on the background you see the PPP protocol analyzer. Uh, again, it goes in much details about uh, the PPP, source IP, destination IP, UDP port, destination port, and so forth and like that. So on top of that, uh, what product we have, it can do this further analysis. 
So as I was talking before, that PPP carries the IP, and IP can carry any kind of traffic. So let's say it carries the voice or IP traffic there. So we have a product uh, uh, that can analyze a voice over, a tra voice over IP traffic here, okay? So this illustrates a, a SIP call being monitored, which is carried over uh, the PPP over Sonnet interface there. So this is the depth of the product that illustrates that you can go at a application level details from physical layer all to the all the way to the uh, application layers here okay so moving next uh, so I give you just a glimpse on about the packet over sonnet now I'm moving towards the ATM that's another traditional uh, uh, traffic that carries carried over sonnet interface there so here you can see the ATM has layers there it can be segmentation is uh, supported al0 l2 or l5 so l2 and l5 those are the two predominantly used uh, uh, segmentation uh, aspect kind of thing and al5 would carry further ip traffic and l2 normally carries a voice traffic or segments kind of thing there so rather than a uh, packet domain in an uh, packet or sonnet here those these are the the ATM cells that's carried or sonnet interface and this ATM cells further carries IP uh, traffic into it or as I discussed it can carry the uh, the voice traffic or l2 interface there uh, similar feel and look again uh, gives you lots of details about alarms errors related to ATM and Sonnet here. Uh, so again, monitor mode, termination mode possible, and uh, various clock options possible settings here. Okay, moving next again. Uh, this is a ATM board where you can test end-to-end -end network or Sonnet interface if you're carrying ATM. You can be using VPI, VCI, user-defined VPI, VCI, and provision that, and you can generate your traffic, uh, like bird traffic, QRSS, and so forth kind of thing. You can inject at one end and verify the other end, or you can loop it back at the other end and verify at single end there also there. The board ports are available for receive and transmit and verify the, the, the trans, transmission and make sure that that it's uh, the stem one stem four is configured correctly and uh, works correctly there. So the pro any device can be tested, network can be tested into and here also. Okay, again, so so. Traditionally, if somebody is familiar with the UMTS, which is a 3G uh, a wireless domain, there that's where this ATM was uh, ATM was defined as transport mechanism. There, the 3GPP spec defined that the traffic should be carried over ATM, and that's where uh, it, it's uh, many of the circuits are used in this form factor that still carries Sonnet inter interface and this is how this uh, different uh, elements into the network looks like. There is RNC, there is MSC, uh, there are carries IP trap, this carries IUCS carries the voice traffic, the PS domain carries a data traffic there and that's how it's deployed into the network. So GL products can emulate RNC, it can emulate MSC here, and it can create different kind of traffic there uh, over the ATM interface there. So it can create also voice traffic. You can see from this traffic plane here, the ATM, L2, L2 carrying IUP, 
which is carrying AMR cardacs and voice traffic there. Similarly, it's a signaling plane. You can see this all stack is supported by GL products and it can emulate or it can monitor there. Uh, so it's very uh, feature rich in that way. Uh, it can do from, again, at physical layer to the application layers. So, so this is a snapshot of the analysis, which is done on a UMTS interface, uh, which collects the information. Uh, this are showing some of those mobile originated calls there. Uh, you can go to the hard content, the details about the calls being monitored, and can be uh, the recorded this calls so again. So I think the further question that was asked in the previously, can you capture the calls and so forth? Yes, so again, this is a, a, at this level, the application level, the calls are being monitored and can be captured for further analysis or for forensics or for lawful intercept and so forth. Uh, so always, uh, um, uh, the, there is capability in, in our product, various uh, interfaces, the record and playback is one of the critical aspect of our product. Uh, we allow users to select, to capture the, uh, or record uh, either is a packet-based traffic or whether it's a circuit-based traffic. We have various ways to capture those um, informations into the packet. So when we are capturing in this packet, we captured it in a GL proprietary format because those packets can be various length and we have to put our header and so can be used uh, for further analysis and so forth kind of thing there. Uh, again, the ATM cells can be captured, okay? So uh, uh, it, it allows you to capture anything and everything that's carried over Sonnet interface there. And again, the playback application allows you to replay those traffic which captured there. Or you can have synthesize your traffic also and which can be played back using our hardware and software. Uh, so here is another uh, uh, applications that we have deployed using our Lightspeed platform, uh, which is a a creating a delay. Uh, so sometimes you do need to equipment manufacturers or a service provider like to test out some of those capability uh, when they want to introduce some delay either in a packet or sonnet uh, technology or ATM technology. So GL product has capability to do this various kind of delay emulations there. Uh, so this slide demonstrate that capability there. Okay. Uh, this is the final slide. I just wanted to touch base with that. As I mentioned in a pre, uh, very early on that, that we use these two ports for packet traffic here. And we have used here the third port here as a gigabit Ethernet port. So what are we doing with this thing is that we are using uh, Lightspeed as a, a bridge between the ATM and Ethernet. Okay, so all the traffic that comes over uh, uh, stem one that would be carried over and then fed back into the Ethernet, a drop on the Ethernet. And whatever the traffic comes from the Ethernet, it's normally it is brought over and then that taken out over ATM interface or uh, the stem one there. So again, uh, it's possible to create a customized solutions and we work, we work with the various uh, vendors to build some custom solutions here. So, yep, based on uh, uh, the requirement. So, that's the end of the presentation here, and uh, be all happy to take any questions you might have. Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, we have uh, one question, uh, which uh, I think uh, after that we can wind up. 
can we emulate the map protocol on few even time slots and ISIP on others the same time? A probe needs to trace calls from ISIP to mobile. That's what he's asking. Right, okay. So yeah, the question is, can you emulate multiple protocols? Uh, so using our maps platform, you could run the map, map as well as other protocol of the interest there. So simultaneously, you could run multiple protocols and emulate multiple protocols. So yeah, we will be happy to provide you a further um, the demos or so forth kind of thing uh, to clarify any of your detailed questions there. But uh, it is used in that ways that people do use our product to test out media gateways or SDPs and so forth kind of thing. With this platform, multiple protocols can be emulated, whether it's IP and TDM, also can be brought together in a single server. So it depends on uh, the kind of the volumes and traffic that you want to create. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jagdish. Thank you, Anand. Thank you.